You know, there's a lot of ways that you can make money or earn money in the world, but there are really a few different ways that people can earn money, like as for their actual labor, right, for what they put in. So I want to talk to you about number one, employees, and then talk about people that are self-employed, and then people talk to people that are entrepreneurs, kind of the differences of those different things. So first off, an employee. An employee trades their time for money. So if you are an employee, if you work for somebody else, which is the majority of the world, if you're an employee and you work for somebody else, you trade your time for money. A lot of times that always starts when we're younger, we do odds and ends jobs, we might go to a restaurant or whatever, we work and we get paid for the hour. So very basic math, right? If you, if you make, let's just say 20 bucks an hour, <clears throat> we pay our babysitters $25 an hour, and I, that still blows my mind, but that's what the going rate is here, so it is what it is, but let's take that, let's say it's 25 bucks an hour. And they work for four hours in an evening, they make $100. I know, crazy, but that's what it is. So that's what they make. Here's the deal, if they're not working, they're not getting paid. Now, let's talk about when people get more of a full-time job. So you have a full-time job and you're making, let's say 25 or 30 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour, whatever it might be. When you work a certain amount of hours, you get paid for that. But what comes out of that? Taxes. So as an employee, you work and your taxes come out of that money. So you really, you have limited control on your taxes. Matter of fact, you don't even get to see that money. It never even makes it to you. Depending on what you claim as dependence on your tax form when you fill out to get your job, that determines how much money is taken out of your account every single solitary paycheck. Sometimes people get very excited as a W-2 employee. They can't wait till tax time till they can get a refund. It's your money. <laughs> so I want to make sure you don't get too excited about that. They took your money away, they held it, they used it for a year, they earned interest on it or whatever, and then you fill out some paperwork and you get a chunk of that back in a tax refund. It's not the best way to earn money, but <clears throat> a lot of people do, and that's what a W-2 employee is. They really have limited time for them too. If you want to do something fun with your family, you wanna go on vacation, what do you have to do as a W-2 employee? You have to ask for vacation. A lot of times, if your company doesn't have an open policy, which most don't, you have, to, you have to put in and ask for that vacation. Hopefully someone else didn't request the same time as you, and then you'll get vacation. So you don't have a lot of freedom as a W-2 employee, right? They tell you when you have to work, you show up to work. Now, as you go up the scale to jobs that pay more, well, you, you still have a lot of limitations, right? You still, have a lot of, you still have a certain amount of people say, well, I get six weeks vacation time a year. Big whoop, right? But you get six weeks, well, Good for you, that's a lot of vacation time, but that's still someone else telling you when you can go, when you can go on vacation, does that make sense? So obviously for me, I have been uh, an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old, so 34 years ago right now as I'm recording this. So all I've ever known is working for myself, but so the first step is, is the first way to, to make money is to be an employee. The next one is to be self-employed. What's it mean to be self-employed? Self-employed means you generate your own income. Now that can be a lot of things, right? You're, you may or may not own a business, but you generate your own income. You might be in sales. You might own your own uh, distribution kind of a company. You might be in home-based sales where you are self-employed. You don't, you get a 1099 from somebody else or you get direct income from your customers, whatever you're selling, whatever service you're providing. So if you mow lawns for a living, you're self-employed. Meaning you set your schedule, right? And you have to go do the work. You don't get paid unless you do the work. Now, here's the pros and cons. The pro is you have freedom. The con is if you're not working, you're not getting paid. It's as simple as that. It's not really that much better than a W-2 employee because as a self-employed person, as a self-employed person, you still um, are responsible for your own taxes. You still have to have your, uh, if you want to take vacation time, right? That's up, that's up to you. But if you're not working, you're not getting paid. Simple as that. So self-employed, uh, and I don't care what level you're at, meaning if you mow lawns and you're self-employed, well, that's what you do, right? You mow lawns, you get self, you're self-employed. If you are a vet, like for instance, we, there's a vet in my town, amazing vet, love her, she's great. But when I went into her practice not too long ago, I signed up and took my cat in for some uh, checkup things she had going on. She actually did all the work on the cat and then checked me out and I paid her when I left. So she was working in the full veterinary clinic herself. There was nobody else in there and I haven't seen any, any signs of another employee. So she is self-employed, right? Doesn't own a business. She runs a business, but she's self-employed. So really that business owns her. Because the minute she stops, 
right? That business is over. That business really has no value on the open market because it's just a, it's just, she works for herself. She's self-employed. So you think you have a lot of freedom, but think about it. When you go on vacation, when you're self-employed, what do you do? You shut the business down. Just yesterday, I actually went to a, a Thai restaurant to have some sushi for lunch. And I walked in, there were signs all over the wall that said, closed for the month of September. I said, you guys are closing? They said, yeah, we're traveling. We're going back to Thailand next month. I said, great. And I thought, you still have bills to pay. Like you still have rent due, insurance due. There's a lot going on. Plus you lose all that income for that month. But that's because they're self-employed. That moves them to the next phase of an earner. And that's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is really someone that can focus on the business. They can work on the business, not in the business. So self-employed really works in their business every day. An entrepreneur, if they do it right, they can rise above the business and be able to look at the business and plan, like have employees, have a team of people and build that. Now, an entrepreneur has a business that usually has value in the open market. The business is not dependent on your personality every day. Like when you're self-employed, if you're having a bad day, so is your company because it's just you, right? But when you're an entrepreneur and you have employees, if you've built the business on systems, hopefully your personal energy is not always responsible for the mood of the company every day, right? Because it's built on systems and processes. So an entrepreneur, however, I guess it's important to know that an entrepreneur typically has a lot of freedom. Right? So yes, a self-employed person has more freedom than a W-2 employee, but they, when they go on vacation, they don't get it paid for like a W-2 employee does, right? They have, they built up vacation time. So they get paid for it. They may have, may, may have other benefits and stuff. When you're self-employed, you don't have those benefits. Now, hopefully you earn more than a W-2 employee, but I can tell you from experience, most of the time you don't, okay? So as an entrepreneur now, as an entrepreneur, now you've got people that work for you. You've built a team of people and they are working for you. As an entrepreneur, if you have built your business correct, you should be able to step away from that business. You should be able to step away from that business if you have to leave for a few months or hopefully, I mean, not a couple of years, but maybe, but you can step away for a few months if you have an emergency or whatever, and the business should run without your day-to-day -day involvement if you build it correctly. So when you're thinking about building a business, you wanna think about who you wanna surround yourself with as an entrepreneur. Because if you wanna build a business you can actually walk away from, that produces income, you wanna stick with the entrepreneur level over the self-employed. The self-employed does all the work themselves. An entrepreneur finds employees to do the work for them and they pay the employees and pay the, hopefully they pay the employees well to do the work for them, right? And that way they can continue to grow and scale their business and do whatever they want. Now they have more, they have true freedom because they're usually making a lot of money if, if their business is running correctly they're making a lot of money. They can step away from the business and still get paid. They can take a Monday, a Tuesday off. They can take the next month off if they want to and still get paid. That restaurant that I went to just the other day, they cannot take time off because when they took time off, they're not going to get paid. When they said we're closing, I thought to myself, see, if they were an entrepreneur and they had put other employees in and trained them on how to do what they do, they would be an entrepreneur and have freedom, but instead they're just self-employed. Now, when you start as an entrepreneur, you rarely start with a full team of people. Almost every entrepreneur story starts like Amber and I. You start at the bottom, you do all the work yourself and you figure it out. And when you get too busy, you hire an assistant to come help you in that department, right? And that's what you do as a, when you're self-employed and you, you either, you either stop taking on new clients. I've heard that too, right? We have a guy that does all of our lawn work for all of our homes that we own up in New York, about 50 houses he mows. And he'll say, no, I'm not taking any more clients. Like, this is all I'm gonna take on. I can't do any more. Now, if he were smart as, a, as an entrepreneur, if he thought like an entrepreneur, he's a smart guy, but if he thought like an entrepreneur, he'd say, well, I'm gonna hire someone to do the work, right? I'm gonna pay them a little bit less, and I'm gonna make money on, as an override off of them so I have freedom and can walk away. So most people that are entrepreneurs start as business owners. When it gets busy enough, they make a different decision, right? The decision is, okay, who do I want to hire? So there's a great book you can get called Who, Not How. I'll say it again. The book is Who, Not How. And that trains you to start thinking like an entrepreneur. When you want to get something accomplished, you say to yourself, okay, who can get this done for me? What type of person do I have to look for to get this done for me? What will it cost me to get this done for me? Because if you can spend your time on the high end or the high per hour work, 
So in our business, finding houses, in real estate investing business, finding houses is the number one, that's the best thing, right? So if you can spend your time finding houses and you can sub out everything else, well, that's where you can make the most money. For us now, my job is to find good people, right? We're not involved in day-to-day -day operations of our flipping business because we have great people that we have found over the years, but we started as a self-employed person. Right when I was at my the only job I ever had as a W two employee, well, I had you know I scooped ice cream in high school and a couple of those jobs. Worked worked really hard, shoveling shoveling cow manure and a lot of that stuff. I lived I lived by a farm, so I did a lot of baling hay, so I did a lot of that cash work. But my job that I had was for about one year. I worked for a security and alarm company. My own brother had to fire me. Right, I was actually started my own company alongside while working there, and they didn't like that very much. They sent him down to fire me. What a conversation that was. It was a pretty fun story. I still love my brother. It was a great, uh, great story to look back on. But then I stepped out at 19 years old and was self-employed for a long time. I did all the work myself. I used to do all the sales in my alarm company myself. I did the installations. But when I started to learn how to hire people, ironically, I wasn't. it wasn't until I was in my late 40s I started to figure out how to put teams together and to figure out what my role was. And my role as a visionary or an entrepreneur is to do just that. Invest in other people and create jobs for them. Because as an entrepreneur, that's what we really do. We create jobs and we create opportunities for other people and that helps us build our dream as an entrepreneur. So I, I would say to you as we wrap this up, ask yourself where you wanna be. Do you wanna be a W-2 employee that gets their taxes taken out all the time and they told what to do? Or do you wanna be work for yourself, self-employed? If you do, I would encourage you to be thinking about if I start self-employed, how can I move into that entrepreneur chair? Because moving into the entrepreneur chair is where you get real true time and financial freedom. That is where it's at if you want to be a true business owner and have time freedom, financial freedom, and have a business that has some worth on the open market. That's where I would encourage you to get to. So the choice is yours.